Today we're going to talk about our CNT gas sensor array with palladium functionalization. But first of all, why did we choose to do this type of sensor? CNTs have very good properties like a high surface to volume ratio, which is uh, specifically for sensor applications very beneficial. During the fabrication process, they can simply be applied by spray coating, which is the main reason for high reproducibility. We worked with a sensor array instead of a single sensor because the many measurements of the array allows us to not only detect a gas, but also distinguish between the gases. A sensor array is therefore selective. The sensor is fabricated on a silicon wafer. The structure is made by photolithography, creating a pattern with electrodes. First, chromium is deposited and works as an adhesive layer for the gold. Then gold is deposited creating the conductive electrode structure. This is all done in a vacuum chamber, evaporating the metals onto the substrate. The photoresist is then removed with a lift-off process. Finally, the single-wall carbon nanotubes are spray deposited to form the resistive network for gas sensing. The next step is the functionalization. On each sensor, we evaporated a layer of palladium of different thicknesses. The resistances of our sensors are now modified and we can distinguish between them. On the bottom of our sensor is an Peltier device. With this, we are able to heat up the sensor array to 80 degrees during, the, during each recovery cycle. We are recording and controlling the temperature during the recovery cycles with the temperature sensor. So, we are done with functionalization. Now we will move to characterization. In characterization, we expose our CNT gas sensors to ammonia and ethanol with nitrogen as carrier gas. And we have a couple of equipments. We have a source meter, DMM, and we use LabVIEW. We put our sensor in the uh, gas chamber. So, we have a total of nine connections, and we measure the resistance versus time on LabVIEW. In the initial phase, we do the active recovery. In active recovery, we first purge using carrier gas, then we heat up to 80 Celsius, then we cool, and then we expose our sensor to gas samples. If we now look at the response of the four sensors, the resistance decreases as the palladium nanoparticle size increases. During the measurement, we can see strong oscillations of the four sensors, which are on the one hand due to the temperate changes caused by the active recovery, and on the other hand, the responses to the different concentrations of ethanol and ammonia. For further analysis, the normalized response is introduced, which describes the change in resistance during the four exposure cycles for each sensor and each test gas. If we now use the principal component analysis to illustrate the matrix of all normalized responses in a meaningful and clear arranged way, we get a two-dimensional plot with the principal components of the two test gases in certain regions. Every measurement with an unknown gas now can be included to the PCA and we are able to distinguish between ammonia and ethanol depending on the location of the new data point. Of course, a PCA with more than two gases and more measurements would make the sensor array more reliable.